Welcome tonight. This is Christian Life Assembly of God, our evening service. So glad to be with you. Uh, Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day. And we're so glad you could join us. And we want to pray as we get started here. Uh, we did want to make mention of the mothers. And we also want to pray for our leaders, continue to lift them up in these difficult times. And also, I had a prayer request come in this afternoon. Brother Woody and Sister Anita know a young man named Dakota. And Dakota needs prayer. And uh, God knows all his needs. And so if you would, we'll give this time that we have together to the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we give you praise that we could join together in one accord. Even with distance separating, you still are here in our midst. And we ask that you bless our time together. We acknowledge our dependence on you. We ask, Father, that you bless these services that, Lord, um, your word will accomplish everything you send it to do in our hearts. We do pray, dear God, for uh, every mother out there who is um, needing encouragement, needing uh, some strength. Just let them know, dear God, on this day we, we celebrate how much you're working in their lives. Minister to them, we pray. We also pray for all the um, uh, leaders above us in our nation, in our state, and locally, that each one will receive grace and wisdom in these difficult times. That, Lord, and what we're going through as a nation, it's very hard, but, Lord, it's not too hard for you. And we just ask that, that the wisdom they have as, as things open back up, as, as the circumstances are constantly changing, we give them to you and believe for um, you to work through each one. We ask, Father God, also for Dakota. We do pray for him as... Uh, uh, Brother Woody and Sister Anita are ministering to him, minister in his life. You know the needs that are there, and we believe for good for his life in every way. We love you for it. And we mentioned several this morning. We uh, bring those before you, Lord, just asking that in each one of these needs that you have your way and be glorified. And uh, we'll expect to hear good testimony soon. And as we go into your word, we just ask you bless it for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good to join you again tonight from the house here. See some folks have tuned in. Very much welcome. My family is also here with us, and uh, the, we're glad to be able to share with you tonight. Before we get started in the Word, just want to share a few quick things for us. It is a time we're getting pretty excited. Opening up for the church is very soon. It's very near. And uh, we talked about it some today at, with the folks that were gathered there, but um, with the recent court rulings, everything is still up in the air. And so we still need to have uh, permission from our leadership as to what we're going to do in the assembly of God. But once our state leadership, we talk to them a little bit, uh, we'll, we'll have a plan together. Uh, we'll be back with you probably from this same place, uh, Wednesday night, good, the good Lord willing, but then Sunday, possibly we may be back together again but we'll make sure to let everybody know both here on facebook and youtube and try to send it out to everybody if we can gather up and again as i said this morning if you're if you can't gather yet don't worry we'll still be presenting everything on facebook and youtube continue to do so and hopefully continuing on and on to present because we're very blessed excited for this new uh, line of ministry for our church so just being able to reach out to new people. It's amazing how God uses times like this to bring good things out where we're able to reach out to different folks uh, that may have never, uh, uh, we might never have reached otherwise. All right, so just kind of like an announcement, we'll make sure to announce everything really soon to everybody. And if you have questions that come up, please uh, let us know. And um, yeah, so we want to share something for Mother's Day. I do encourage this. Couple thing, a couple other things. If you didn't get to see the service this morning, I encourage you to. Sister Ruth Cross shared an awesome message. It is well with my soul is what it's titled. And I believe it'll be a blessing to you if you get a chance to hear that. And so that's all, that's on Facebook and YouTube right now. And then Wednesday night, I encourage you to tune into, as I mentioned, we'll probably talk about, as the Lord leads us, some different things to prepare us as we get back together. And so I think it'll be some encouraging things as we look toward getting back into the house of God. Uh, some some good some thoughts that, and I just encourage you to tune in for that as well. And that is Wednesday night at seven. All right, Matthew chapter fifteen and verse twenty one tonight. We want to 
talk for just a few minutes about a faithful mother, a faithful mother. God has blessed us with mothers and so appreciate their faithfulness, but also God has called all of us to faithfulness. He, he wants us to, to see that grow in our lives as Christians and not just to be staying where we are. So let's dig into the word here and read the story about a Canaanite woman who showed just how faithful she was. All right, and so we're going to read Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat, it is not proper to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And may God bless his word richly tonight. Yeah. Well, families in these times we're living in now are very much in need. Very much in need. And as we've talked before and as we see, the devil very much wants to attack our families. More than ever these days. The devil knows his time is short. Who will step up and believe? So often, it's the mothers that do. In these quarantine days, moms are often teaching kids, taking care of the house, and trying to be peacemaker as more people are home. And they deserve our thanks. And so we send those thanks to our moms. And uh, we understand it gets hard, though. We understand it gets hard, and we need encouragement to be faithful for the mothers and for all of us. So many are sacrificing right now in different scenario situations of all types, and uh, we need that encouragement. And we believe we'll hear testimonies in days to come, but when the times get hard, how can we be faithful to God, to our families? What is what is the, the plan? This Canaanite woman shows us a great a great testimony of how we can do that. So let's talk about some, some ways here. The first we can do, we need to come to Jesus with our family. This woman obviously cared for her, families, her family a lot, as most everyone does, but she went an extra step to come to Jesus. Canaanites here in this passage, we simply mean Greek speakers. They weren't Jews, and they didn't see Jesus much. Jesus didn't go that way very often. Uh, Jesus did a few miracles for non-Jews, but... Um, not as many, at least at this point. And the woman had heard of Jesus's good report. And she was willing to find a man that she had never heard, never met. But she was willing to find this foreign man to help her. And wow, what, de what an example and dedication of faithfulness that's here. And aren't we thankful for our moms that do the same thing? And even in the midst of great trial, this woman had a daughter that was possessed by a demon, the Bible says. And we're reminded in this story, the devil doesn't play fair. And so we've got to keep caring for our families, even when they're doing badly, even when it's there. We just don't understand why things are the way they are. We've got to keep caring for our families, trusting God to minister, continuing to come and bring our families to Jesus, because that's how we're going to we're going to make it. We often have plans to whip our families into shape. We want to see them changed. And uh, we just want to give them a piece of our mind. We just want to straighten them out. But without God, we realize that it's just going to frustrate everybody, us, ourselves, and God. It's just going to be a frustrating thing without God. Uh, but we really, truly see change when we bring our families to Jesus. How often did I see my mom on her knees praying for the family. How often have so many moms stood in the gap bringing it to Jesus because we can try to whip everybody into shape, 
but we realize we just need a miracle so often from the Lord. But we understand there is no problem that our families are going through today. There is nothing going on that he doesn't have an answer for, that he doesn't have a plan for. We need to ask him and trust him, pursue him constantly, and ask him to lead our actions. Sometimes we may have to try to whip people into shape, but we've got to go to him first. We've got to pursue his will for our families first. And when we do, there's going to be answers. So we got to... We got to set it in our hearts to come to Jesus. And then we've got to keep persevering once we do. In verse 23, we see here that Jesus didn't say a word to her. He was silent to this woman. What a test of faith that she was going through in this time. Didn't he care about her suffering? Well, the silence of God doesn't mean he doesn't care. I'm glad to know God knows what he's doing. We just have to be ready when he speaks, and when he's ready to move, we're ready with him. And the disciples wanted Jesus to make her get lost. She was a distracting woman foreigner. As the woman at the well, as some have said, she had three strikes against her, but in the people of that day, she was in the way. She's a woman. She's a foreigner. But oh, aren't you glad Jesus loves everyone he makes Everyone he's made, he has a plan for. And he talks, he does talk to this woman eventually. Uh, but if you look and see what he says in verse 24, it doesn't totally make sense, but she keeps coming anyway. Oh, I'm so thankful for those women who continue to persist and continue to go after God. We're so thankful for those people that are persistent. Just as we talked not too long ago about Jacob wrestling, we understand that as we wrestle and are persistent, there God is. There's a lady that, a uh, dear lady in our church, her name is Shirley Holder. And Shirley Holder was the, the mom of Big Ricky and grandma and everybody. And Shirley Holder was quite a remarkable woman. And uh, she first came to the church when Brother Roy, the pastor that was there before me, was there. And um, she would bring folks in. She would bring special speakers in. And there would be problems sometimes. I remember there was a time, particular time, where we had some singers that were that came in, and there was an issue that came up, and some folks got upset. But she didn't. She's like, "I'm not going to get upset. I'm going to keep coming anyway." If there was a problem, she wasn't there. She wasn't going to be quitting. And I had what I would do for for Shirley is that I would come by her house there. It wasn't far from Christian Life, from the church there. I'd drive by her house and I'd help her out with her computer. And uh, her computer seemed to have persistent problems. Uh, but I would be there to help and try very hard to fix it. And then we would end up talking about the Lord just sitting right there. And she wasn't going to give up on her computer either. <laughs> we spent some spent some time together. And she, she was tenacious. But God opened doors. And I was just privileged to talk to her. She really loved everybody and really ministered to everybody. And wasn't about to give up on anybody. And uh, she was, God brought victory through her. And I, I'm thankful for what God did for her and the legacy that she left there in the church. So what are we saying? Don't give up on your request just because people tell you that God doesn't care. Or maybe people are telling you now God doesn't care about this situation. Or maybe right now God's timing doesn't make sense on how things are going. But I want to give you a really deep theological truth here tonight. God is really smart. He is really, really smart. He is drawing good out of you as you wait. In these virus times, God is amazingly drawing good out of us. Well, what good can come from all this going on in the world? God is drawing good out as we're looking around and see. And many of the epistles, many of the, the works of God were drawn out in times of trouble. And uh, that's that's how the books of the Bible were so often written, with problems and troubles that, that God had to work through. I remember growing up in the church, I mentioned Brother Roy was our pastor. Uh, one of the greatest worship times I remember in, in that church, it was a Sunday night, just like this one, and God was moving in song. And what it was, Brother Roy was greatly distressed about his sick little puppy. His, his little Pomeranian dog was really sick. And uh, he was distressed, and he, but I, he, he just brought it out in worship. He pursued God. 
And it was a blessing, not only for him, I know he was up there playing the guitar and being blessed, but also all of us out there, including me, a lot younger then, but I was being blessed. And the trouble brought out the good. And God is drawing that out of folks right now, just as he drew it out of this woman right here. God is drawing that good out of us. So we're patient. We continue to pursue. We keep persevering with God. And as we persevere with God, verse 25, the Bible talks about how that she came and worshiped and, and cried out saying, Lord, help me, Lord, help me. And, uh, she, she fell down before him and called him Lord and then asked her request. Jesus is not always called Lord in the scriptures, but here is a foreign woman with knowledge about who Jesus is humbly coming before Jesus and willing to surrender to him, even though she may not understand everything, even though she doesn't know what's going on, here is this woman surrendering to him. I want to tell a story about another dear lady. Her name was Sister Virginia. Sister Virginia, as she came with Shirley, and Virginia there at the church, she uh, didn't grow up in the faith as much, and actually had gotten involved in, in, in a cult ministry, if you will. And that cult ministry, she had stayed there for, for several years. And uh, But when Shirley brought her to the church, she joined in. And Miss Jenny is what we'd call her. And one there was one service, now this was all 20 years ago or so, and there was a service when there was a young preacher that came in to, for a revival. It was a revival service, and a preacher came in, and he preached a really strong message about the end times. You know, you better get right because Jesus is coming soon. We talked a little bit about that last week. Jesus is coming soon. You you better be ready. Well, that wasn't probably anything like she ever heard in that in the um, the uh, other organization she was in, the other cult that she was in. She wasn't hearing those type things. But you know what? You know who answered that altar call? There was Miss Jenny answering that altar altar call and giving her life to Jesus. And I remember she was baptized in Sister Melba's pool. And Melba was a dear lady in our church, too, and there she was baptized. And the point I'm saying to all that was is that Miss Jenny, even though by the time she she had give, came down and gave her heart, raised her hand for salvation, all she had to be a well on up in her 70s, well on up in years by that time. And I say that to say this, it's never too late to humble ourselves. It's never too late to keep persistently coming to God. And, and not letting anything that others perceive as a handicap stop us. We need a, we need that, that humility coming before the Lord and a reverence to come before him too. He is our Lord. He is our God. And we have to have that, that, yeah, you know, as we get older, sometimes we can get a little more flippant. I guess would be the word I would use. We get a little bit more lax if we're not careful, but he is still a holy God. We have to remember that he needs to become before in spirit and truth. And so we need to come humbly before him, seeking him. And uh, he is our friend, absolutely true, but he is also our God. And so we, we have to keep that, keep all that balanced and in mind that he is Lord and come before him with reverence. Jesus even called her a dog here. Didn't he love her? Didn't he? What, what's this up? Well, Jesus first came to Israel, God's chosen people. And uh, non-Jewish people, that was just the term that was used in those days, calling them dogs. And it's like, oh, what, what's up with that? Did Jesus not love her? Of course he did. Of course he loved her. Of course he didn't think bad of her. Again, what does Jesus do? He draws those things out. What is he drawing out of you right now? Is he saying some things to you? It's very easy to get offended. It's very easy to get offended at what the Lord is doing in us. It's very easy to feel like God has wronged us when things don't go the way we want them to. And we, we people are tend, tending to figure they can do better than God. Well, let's be reminded for us, is our great theological truth we said at the beginning, God is really smart. In fact, we have a term for it. He is all smart. He is omniscient. And uh, he is drawing that, that faith. He's drawing wisdom in the fire that this woman went through. And, uh, excuse us, a little technical difficulty there. Uh, he's drawing the, drawing the, um, good things from us. 
and so many that have been faithful. Yes, they've had to go through obstacles. Three times this woman suffered resistance, just right here in, the, in these few verses. But she didn't stop. She knew what the Lord had for her. She knew there was something good on the other side. And so many people have seen this, and when they, they do, they see results. God brings results to those who have faith. God brings results to those who seek him. And she had an answer ready. It was a very humble answer. You know, Jesus said, well, I can't toss it to the dogs. Well, even the dogs, you know, she didn't get offended at that. She didn't. She's like, hey, I'm going to keep coming. And she she was ready with the answer that, hey, you have something for me, God. I might not have, I've, you know, I've, I've got issues just like anybody else, but I know you've got something for me. And when she had the, that kind of faith, it's an example for us today, Jesus himself said. And she, in verse 28, had the had her daughter healed, delivered of the demonic possession. God answers faithful prayers. It's not just a cliche, it's true. And he answers no matter who is praying. And uh, I could tell story after story of how my mom prayed and, and how I've gotten jobs when I needed jobs. How my brother got jobs when he needed jobs. And sometimes... You know, for me, I, I would do all the work. You know, I, I've told these before, but I've applied for so many jobs. You know, when I was looking, and it's like I would I would try every every idea conceivable to apply for work, and uh, but mom was praying, and the right door opened up when it needed to open up, and so so all, often I've been reminded that the work is good, but oh, the praying is so much better. Going to God and being persistent. Is what we need. It takes time sometimes. It takes a lot of lack of understanding. But we know God hears those prayers for our kids and our families today. He's listening to those prayers. And I told some stories of some dear ladies, and there's probably dear ladies you know that have been faithful in your life. It's good to be grateful, but it's also good to do what they do and pursue God for our families. And, um, I'll mention again, I, I'm thankful for my mom, all those times she read stories about the faith, about how great heroes in the past, how God answered prayers. Those stories made a difference. And uh, and uh, where would I be if that hadn't happened for me? Where would you be without the great men and women in your life that have stepped up and been willing to say, hey, this is the way to go. We need to take it, even when things get hard. And so we realize that you know, as things are beginning to open up again in the world, there's still a virus out there. As things begin to come, there's still a lot of trouble out there. There's a lot of people that don't have work out there. There's a lot of need in the world. But we believe in a God as we persistently seek. He'll give just the vision we need to see things answered. He's not, he's not done with this world just yet. He's not come to get us just yet. So there's something for us to do here. And so we want to see our churches come back strong. He wants to see our churches come back strong. We need to faithfully encourage and build up our families. That's really one of the biggest ways we can do that in this time. If you can't do anything else right now, we can pray for our families and see them built up because that's really where God wants to work so often, building up our families, seeing them saved, seeing them delivered. He wants to. He wants to. And so I, I just encourage you, as this Canaanite woman was faithful and received, uh, we can receive too. And I believe she received so much more and, and what great faith she had. And I believe like so many will hear their stories in heaven. Uh, and, and I look forward to it. But while we're still here, may we very much hang in there and pursue God and keep praying to him daily for our families, daily for the needs and not not give up when there's the silence that, that God has. There's something good on the other side. So I want to pray with us here. If there's anyone that's watching tonight or anyone that's watching at any time in the future and you need this Jesus and you, you just, you've heard about him and maybe you've come to, to a place where, well, you know, I, I, I want to do good, but I just, I know I can't do it on my own. You kind of come to a place where you've just been in the valley of decision and you're, you've been pursuing things. It's not there. This is the day you can go all the way. He is ready. I believe the spirit would draw those in that don't know Jesus to know him today. We don't know how much time we have left, 
Just as that brother preached, I, I told a story earlier about how he preached on the end times. Jesus is coming. He is coming soon. And we've got to be ready. And so we, we want to not, not stop now. Give your life to Jesus today. He wants to, he wants to know you more than you want to know him and just come to him today with, with your very heart and soul. And we want to pray for you today. If that's you, if you've just been wandering away from God, what a beautiful day to come back to him. And what a beautiful day to continue praying for our families. So let's pray and let's give these time, these to God. Father, we just come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, everyone that's watching this, you know the needs. You know how many, dear God, may not even know you as Savior. They may not even know who you, really who you are. They've heard about you. They've, they pursued maybe some different things, maybe even pursued you at once, but they never just gave their lives to you. And I just ask right now that you, through your spirit, draw them in, that they might in, in every way, dear God, surrender to you, their lives, their hearts, to everything they are, and be saved. We pray for any that don't know you as Savior, Lord, um, today. And we also pray for those who maybe have backed away. Lord, you are the friend. You, dear God, cure and heal the backslider. And we pray for that too, dear God, that, Lord, just as you call us to persevere, you you did everything to come to us and persevere for us. And we just ask right now, while there's time, dear God, that, Lord, that there be many that 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 submit to you and then resist the devil and he will flee and they will they will return to you with their whole hearts. We pray for that, dear God. We pray for those, dear Lord, also who are interceding for their families. We pray, dear God, for every lost loved one represented here. We believe that you're the Savior. We believe dear, that you are Lord. We believe that you would pull in many today, and we believe for that, dear God. With them, we pray for our moms, our wives, the daughters, the ladies in our lives that have stepped up. Bless them. Use them for your plan, dear God, and help them never to give up, to know, dear God, that their labor is not in vain. And we believe for good, dear Lord, for each one, and we love you for it. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Amen. And we believe, again, as we we say every time, please let us know if, if God is doing something in you. Please message us. We're here for you. We just ask that, you know, just continue to be in prayer in, the, in these times and not give up. And I see so many different comments from different folks and that, that have watched tonight. And Brother Roger, God bless you, brother. See you on here, Sister Donna. And I, God bless you, too. And Miss Ellen, Sister Ellen, God bless you. And Nina, so glad for everybody I'm seeing on here that's watching, and maybe somebody I missed under there too. I'm looking, I don't think I think I, I think that's all everybody I see. But if you're watching too, we're so glad you're here, and just keep keep sending us stuff. It definitely encourages us in the time that we're away from everybody. But we're looking forward to seeing everybody again real soon, and we love you. Enjoy the rest of your Mother's Day, and and don't give up. Keep persevering, and we'll tune in more. Uh, we'll put some more stuff out as, as we have the information about what's going to happen in the days to come. But there's a harvest to be reaped as we don't give up. God bless you tonight.